Hello, I'm Ron Clark. So, this is our last video. I'm wearing my special Step 10 t-shirt today, too. Um, so, Step 10, the end of initiation into hermetics, at least. Um, but let's recap what we've accomplished in Step 9, which is twofold primarily. Number one is the astromental wandering. You mastered that very easily, I'm sure, and, you know, have explored, gotten to know the world in a new way. Um, the other point of step nine is the inculcation of the four divine qualities. And, uh, I hope you have made good progress with that. Um, that's something that only you can judge. So, yeah, that's step nine. You know, there was vaulting was in there also, and I hope you, uh, I hope that has come to be uh, something very useful for you. Indeed. Okay, step ten. Yeah. It's a kind of brief page this time. There's nothing much I can add to what Barden has said in the book. I mean, to you at this point, it should all be very clear uh, what he is talking about and instructing you to do. Um, I do have some comments, of course. <laughs> um, uh, the first mental work is... Uh, meeting the beings of the elemental realms. Now, most often, when people meet the elemental beings, they're coming to that meeting with certain preconceptions and uh, human-centric biases. You know, we, we tend to judge everything by our human standards. We tend to um, make everything into versions of human beings that we can then relate to very easily. And the same is true, well, this is true, of our encounters with the elemental beings. Objectively, an earth elemental being is not a little human being with stubby arms and stubby legs, a beard, and, you know, why would it be? These are universal forces, and specifically Earth-centric forces. So the idea that an Earth spirit is a gnome, or that an air spirit is a sprite, or that a water spirit is a mermaid, some voluptuous, you know, woman, excuse me, and the fire beings are salamanders. That's probably the most like what a fire being looks like, but it's not an animal. It's not a salamander. It's, you know, none of these actual things are the elemental beings. Um, now, Barden instructs, well, he talks in these terms, and, uh, yeah, um, that is the most common experience, but it is a limited experience. It is limited by your preconceptions. If you try to fit an earth spirit inside of a gnome, it's kind of offensive, really. I would think, as an earth spirit, you know, I wouldn't want to be classified in this shape that makes me look like a human, and I'm therefore subservient to humans. The universe doesn't work that way. It really doesn't. So, if you encounter gnomes when you're going to check out the earth spirits, that will be the limits of your experience of an earth spirit. And I think that's a pity. I really do. Because the earth spirits are so much more than little gnomes walking around with their little lamps. I mean, to me, this just seems absurd. 
uh, because the reality is much different. And same with the other beings of the elements. Especially misconceived is the water element, because we have this heterosexual male uh, interpretation of what that fluidity is. It can only be a voluptuous female. The universe just doesn't work that way, you know? It doesn't. These are not gendered beings. These are universal forces. So, I urge you, uh, in when you follow what Barton says here, that you need to scry in your magic mirror to see the appearance of the elemental beings, that you really check all your preconceptions and biases at the door. You know, don't take them with you in the scrying. With the elemental beings, because they're astramental, um, they're very susceptible to our biases and preconceptions when we encounter them. So, they'll try to fit into your preconception, but don't do that to them. There's no need to do that to them. Look in your mirror and see what they are, not what you think they should be, okay? So don't go looking for a gnome when you go to the earth element realm. Open yourself to the objective reality. Okay, that's enough of my speech on the subject. <laughs> um, Barden's method is very good. What you do is once you see what a gnome looks like to you, basically, um, you adopt the shape, your mental body, you know, you're doing this with your mental body, okay, it's a mental wandering, um, so your mental body, you, you give the shape, the same shape as what you've seen in your magic mirror, okay, that's the first step, then you fill this shape with the element in question, okay, and then you journey, you mental wander, to the realm of the elements. Now, that should be no problem for you at this point to figure out for yourself what that means. How do I get to an elemental realm? Should be very obvious. It should be just plain and simple to you at this point. So once you're in the realm, don't be presumptuous. You know, don't go in there with this I am a human being, I'm a great powerful magician, kind of attitude. Go in with respect. Um, and let them introduce themselves to you. You don't want to barrel in there and just strike up a conversation. You know, even here on Earth, in some cultures that's really offensive. It's very presumptuous. You know, you always wait for the other to acknowledge you and, and uh, want to communicate with you. So, the same goes here in the elemental realm, realms. It's sort of the culture, you know. The human beings shouldn't just barge in and uh, make a ruckus. <laughs> you know, because we don't know what we're doing. The elemental beings know what they are doing with the elements far more than you do, even though you have mastered the elements, it's from this perspective. It's not from the perspective of the elements themselves. And that's what you will learn. You know, what does it mean to be that element that you have accumulated and sent off to do this thing? You know, you get to discover that now. And hopefully it will be a humbling experience. Because the elements, they're not lesser creatures. You know, Barden talks about, well, they're not composed of the four elements. Therefore, you're, they're not as, as high as the humans. And <sighs> that kind of thinking really rubs me the wrong way. Um, because it negates so much of the universe. And we have this habit of making the universe, assuming that the universe 
is somehow a human thing. You know, we're just this tiny, tiny little part of the universe. The universe is a hell of a lot bigger than us. And the elements are a hell of a lot bigger than us. You know, just because they're composed of one element does not make them lesser in any way whatsoever. So, treat them with respect and you'll make such great friends. You don't, the traditional way is you start at the bottom and you, you work your way up the hierarchy of the element till you reach the, the king of the element, you know. You don't need to do that. What you need to do is make friends. You make friends with one being of the element and all the elemental beings will be your friend. That's the nature of the interaction with the elementals if you treat them with their due respect. If you do that, you make friends and that means it really means something for an elemental being to make friends with someone who is obviously a human. You know, anyone who is obviously of a different type of beings, when the elemental beings meet them and interact with them, because humans aren't the only ones who interact with the elemental beings, when there is a, a, an interaction based on mutual respect, there is an instantaneous overwhelming, as it were, um, a friendship that develops. Just a real bond, a real deep connection. And, you know, can be very, uh, well, very beneficial. Um, just like all friendships are beneficial. Uh, you learn from each other, and it is a two-way street, you know. You learn from the elemental, and the elemental learns something from you, from the interaction. Um, it's the same, you know, with every being in the universe. Um, so, yeah, explore the four elemental regions. And Barden does it in the sequence of earth, air, water, fire, um, and he describes great difficulty in encountering the uh, air being, beings especially, but I didn't find that to be true at all. You know, I found all four regions to be, you know, pretty much the same. You know, you go in with respect, you know, and they respond. Um, so, it's very, well, it'll probably be very easy um, getting to know the elemental realms. Okay. So, um, the next work in here, once you have acquainted yourself with the elemental realms and the elemental beings and made some good friendships, um, he talks about having a face-to-face -face encounter with your guardian genius. Now, for me, this is my greater self. And no words can accurately um, describe the experience, at least in my experience. Um, I'm going to include here uh, in the below the video, uh, in the description, uh, a link to an article I wrote, oof, late 90s, I think it was. Um, called Soantha, and it tells, tells the tale of one particular encounter I had with uh, my greater self. Uh, and I hope in that it gives you some kind of idea of how mind-blowing an experience it is, uh, how many different perspectives of self are involved in the whole yeah, um, and but it's not going to be um, just a normal, hey Joe, how you doing today kind of conversation. It's going to be just so multidimensional, uh, yeah, a truly transformative experience. And you will establish this uh, 
channel, this open channel of communication um, between you and your guardian genius um, that you do want to pursue. Because, I mean, no one knows you better than yourself. And that's the case with your guardian genius or greater self. No one knows you better than your greater self, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. And, you know, this can be a source of guidance, really, in, you know, your future growth, you know. So what do you do now, you know. Um, and then, at the end of this, after you've made this contact with your guardian genius, you start exploring the higher spheres. And he gives, I think it's more in uh, Practice of Magical Evocation that he goes into a little more detail on the, uh, the exploration of the higher spheres. Um, basically, the PME is all about that, you know. Uh, that is the, the essence of PME, is the mental wandering in the higher spheres. Here's where you really get to know the variety of types of beings, of types of being um, that are in the universe. And you'll only get a small glimpse of it, um, but still it's a mind-blowing glimpse. I mean, we're dealing with infinity. so. Every great leap in perception that we achieve, you know, behind it is another infinite leap. And, you know, it just, it is endless. You are never going to see it all. That's impossible. All you can do is become it all. And that's what the astral work is. The astral work... <clears throat> is union with the personal God. That's the, 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 the terminology that Barden uses and the conceptualization that Barden uses. Um, yeah, this is so difficult to describe. Uh, it's a long process. Um, he talks about several different techniques, and, and they work, and they're very traditional techniques, basically, um, in which you, basically, you build this very concrete, conceptual, uh, conception uh, of your deity, whatever you want to call it, it has to be the supreme, at any rate, um, the one and only, um, you build your conceptual image and you then uh, seek to materialize this image to extent. You have to be, uh, in, at least in one technique, you want to get it to a point where you can see your God, you know, this conceptualized image, whatever form that takes for you. It could be um, a sphere of, uh, you know, Catholic brilliance. Um, it could be uh, Ganesh, you know, uh, an elephant. Uh, it could be the Buddha, you know, it could be Jesus. Uh, you know, whatever you conceive it to be. This is, again, it's going to be your experience. Hopefully by now, well, I mean, by now you must have understood the importance of objective perception and objective creation and so you know it will be objectively your concept it's more about the concept and the visual appearance the visual appearance is just something that can you can be familiar with very comfortably for most people you know that is the type of relationship that's the most intimate, the most comfortable, um, is a 
face-to-face -face personal relationship. But that doesn't have to be the goal, you know, of this work. Um, but you want to make your image, your conceptual image, so concrete that you can relate to it. X is an external thing at first, but you want to make it an internal thing. So eventually, you know, you're not talking to your God, you are the God. You... This is why we were adopting the four fundamental qualities into our astral body in step nine. You know, it's a continuation of that same process where you transform yourself into your God. You know, instead of exploring the infinity, you become the infinity. It's very much like you do, we were doing with the Akasha, the, uh, the astral ether. You know, we're filling ourselves with the ether and we're becoming the infinite ether. And this is what you're doing here. You're filling yourself with your God and becoming your God. You know, your, the avenue to do that is through this intimate personal relationship. Okay? But you don't want your God to just remain this thing that's separate from you. That's not the point, you know. It's all here within you. It's all one thing. And it's, you know, we have these weird conceptualizations of this process. It's that we think of, oh, I am God. <laughs> you will obey me. My will be done. You know, <laughs> the universe will just laugh you out of the room. <laughs> um, it obviously doesn't happen that way. You know, the idea is that you become your God in every moment. In every moment. This is part of you. It's, you know, your God is looking through your eyes. Your God is feeling things through your fingers. Your God is breathing the air. So it's your God that is manifest in the infinitely finite temporal moment. That's the goal. That's the goal. And for me, here's an illustration of it. This for me illustrates the perfectly integrated human being, the perfectly integrated any being that is the God seeing through the eyes of that being. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. So that is it, basically, with initiation into Hermetics. That is the ultimate goal to where you unite with your greater self, your guardian genius. You have to do this before you will ever achieve union, the true union with your God, basically. The guardian, the greater self, is a step along that way. Um, and you've wandered the higher spheres. You're starting to wander the higher spheres. That's a lifetime kind of work. Um, and you achieve union with your, your personal God. And that is... The ultimate goal of initiation into Hermetics. And the ultimate goal of any religion, that's pur the purported goal of any religion, you know, is essentially um, union with God. Uh, the physical section is just various different subjects, which, you know, are interesting and worth uh, exploring. So, assuming, well, assuming you're in step 10, uh, doing the work of step 10, um, you are, you know, open 
to working with the PME, in fact, that is really step 10, the mental wandering through the higher spheres and the, uh, you know, elemental kingdoms, etc. Um, you're also open to working with KTQ, you know, the Kabbalistic speech or utterance. Um, you really, to really succeed at Kabbalistic utterance, you have to unite with your personal God because it really is that creative power that is necessary. Um, there's so many, there's, you know, an infinite variety of types of magic. Uh, I think that Barden was going to, in the Golden Book of Wisdom, was going to be writing about um, the magic of essential meaning. And this is uh, perceiving essential meaning is where it starts and then manipulating essential meaning and creating essential meaning. Um, that's a very high uh, magic. Um, there's alchemy, which is another high magic, the transformation of physical materia. Um, very powerful magic. Um, there's just so many. Too many to name. There's the magic of Yod Hei Vav Adonai. You know, there's uh, magic with the Catholic brilliance. This is very powerful magic. This is magic that I practice a lot. Um, yeah, you know, the universe is your oyster. <laughs> you know, it's open to you. And you have the capacity now to figure it out. You know, to the, the resources are at your fingertips um, to just explore whatever you want. And you know, you'll find your little specialties and the things you really groove on. And, um, yeah. The universe will continue to grow. <laughs> okay, so that's it for me on these uh, little videos. I hope they've been of some help to someone along the way. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>